chapter 12, Liquid, Solids, and Intermolecular Forces. Uh, the quote here is from Roald Hoffman. It's a wild dance floor there at the molecular level. So we're going to watch this video, um, which has direct bearing on what we're talking about here. This is water in zero gravity. What's going to happen? What will happen to a run-out clock? So, and had to use equipment that was here on board the space station. We might have the coolest washcloths ever here on the space station. I'm going to show you. Here's one of our washcloths. And it's compacted. It. It's put down into this little tiny hockey puck so that uh, it saves space. But when you open up a hockey puck, And you pull out your washcloth. This is the one I'm going to use for the experiment today. And so when you open up your hockey puck and turn it into a washcloth, it was compressed in a great big vise somewhere. Okay, so here's my washcloth, like a magic trick. And now I'm going to get this soaking wet, and then we're going to see what will happen when we wring it out. Merritt and Kendra suggested that I dip this in a bag, but bags don't hold water in space, so instead I filled a water bag. This has drinking water in it. And I'm going to uh, squirt a bunch of water into this washcloth. Okay, so here's a soaking wet washcloth. Get the microphone so you can hear me while I'm talking. And now let's, let's start wringing it out. It's really wet. A bunch of Canadian school children watching. The water. Isn't that crazy? The water's all over my hands. In fact, it rings out of the cloth into my hands. And if I let go of the cloth carefully, the water sort of has it stick to my hand. Okay, so the experiment worked beautifully. And the answer to the question is the water squeezes out of the cloth. And then because of the surface tension of the water, it. Um, it actually runs along the surface of the cloth and then up into my hand, almost like you had jello on your hands or gel in your hand, and it'll just stay there. Wonderful moisturizer in my hands. And the cloth doesn't really unravel itself. It just stays there floating like a, uh, like a dog's chew toy, soaking wet. Great experiment, worked perfectly. Meredith and Kendra, congratulations, great idea. So I found that video, and um, this is actually a, a still picture of that same guy in the same space station. Um, so here he's got a really large drop of water, right? And in space, you can do that. Let's try to get rid of There we go. So... We can't do that on Earth because gravity pulls on the water, right? And it's going to get pulled down. So we're going to learn why water does that. It has to do with intermolecular forces. So the prefix inter here means between. So these forces are between molecules. They are not within a molecule. Those are bonds. These are between molecules. Um, these are attractive forces based on electrical charge. Um, they're very small. They're significant only at very short distances. But they are the reason that we have anything that's solid or liquid on 
in existence, right? And of course, these lunar molecular forces play a big part in physiological processes, biochemical reactions, and, and things like that. So the state of a sample of matter, whether it's a solid, liquid, or gas, is going to depend on the strength of the intermolecular forces holding the particles together relative to the amount of thermal ten energy that it has. So at a higher temperature, it's got more thermal energy, and that might be able to overcome the intermolecular forces. So let's talk about those three states of matter again. Um, helpful to talk about water because we experience water in all three of its states. We have steam, um, liquid water, and solid or ice. So in ice, the particles are fixed relative to each other. They are moving, but they're just wiggling back and forth. In liquid water, the particles, again, are very close together, but now they're moving past each other. They're, you know, milling about a big crowd of water molecules. In the gas state now, the particles are separated from each other by large distances. They're really not interacting with each other at all. And so if we look at the density, um, we can see the density of the gas is much smaller. The density of liquid water and solid water are quite similar. So we say that for both the, um, the solid and the liquid that we have molecules that are touchingly close. So big difference between solids and liquids is freedom of motion. So in a liquid, the particles have enough thermal energy because, you know, as they heat up, they start wiggling more, right? And it's like, you know, antsy people in their chairs, right? They just can't sit still anymore. And they, they get up and they're going to move around. Um, whereas particles in the solid are, are vibrating, but they're locked in position. So we've talked about these ideas before. Um, low density with the gas, high for liquid and solid. Gases and liquids have indefinite shapes. They'll take on the shape of the container. Whereas a solid, you know, you put an ice cube in a sink or a bowl or on a plate and it you know, just keeps the same shape. The volume of a gas is indefinite. A gas will expand to fill the entire container. Whereas liquids and solids, retain their volume. The volume doesn't depend on what they're in. And then we can look at the relative strength of intermolecular forces compared to thermal energy. So liquids assume the shapes of their containers. Um, gases can be compressed. So here we have a gas with a piston. And if you put enough pressure on this, because there's so much empty space, you can compress it and squeeze those molecules closer together. A liquid is not compressible because there's, they're already touchingly close. There's almost no empty space that you can squeeze out, okay? Which is good or your hydraulic brakes would not work. Um, for solids, um, we can separate solids into two broad categories, crystalline or amorphous. So a crystalline solid like this one has a regular repeating order and that order repeats in three dimensions. There's a pattern to it. Amorphous means without shape. There's no long range order. These are just all jumbled together. So we all should be able to answer questions about the state of matter, states of matter. And um, it's good to not jump too quickly to the answer. Stop and think about it for a couple seconds. So which state of matter is compressible? The gas. Oops. Circling it with an eraser doesn't do anything. Now, you know, some people might say, well, my, my sweater here is a solid, right? It's compressible. What's up with that? 
Well, what I'm doing is I'm moving the solid, there's empty space between the parts of the solid, right? And I'm moving them closer together. Um, but a solid solid is not compressible. So state changes occur with change in temperature. So if we take a solid, like an ice cube, and we heat it up, it melts, it becomes a liquid. And if we heat that up, we can cause it to boil or evaporate into the gas state. We can also do that by reducing the pressure. And then we can do the opposite things to make it go in reverse. We can take this gas and we can cool it down to condense it, or we can compress it. We can put pressure on it. And if we take the liquid and cool it down, it will freeze, okay? So we got melting and freezing, evaporation and condensation. An example, this um, is an LP gas tank. So liquefied petroleum, mostly propane. And it's in here under high pressure. And so it's a liquid. And if you look at the cylinder, um, especially when the weather's cold, you can often see where the level of the gas is because this will remain cold while well, that'll warm up. And so you'll see some condensation here and you can tell how full the gas tank is. What's an advantage of having um, this gas be liquefied? We can get a lot more in a small space, right? So if it was a gas, we would not get very much gas into this small canister, but when it's liquefied, we can get a lot more in there, right? Just not having all the empty space. When you open the valve, then you are releasing some of the gas. This whole thing is not filled with liquid. There is a gas headspace up here, and the propane is going to evaporate up there. When you open the valve, the gas propane is able to escape, and then more of the liquid evaporates to replace it. Any questions? And Propane does not have a smell, just like natural gas doesn't have a smell. They put a smell into it because it's dangerous to have gas leaks and not be able to tell. So here is a molecular diagram showing a sample of liquid water. This is liquid water. And then they're asking us which of these best depicts the vapor emitted from a pot of boiling water. A. It's going to be A. So here we have the same molecules. They look like little Mickey Mouse heads to me. The same molecule, an oxygen and two hydrogens. The molecules themselves have not changed. Molecules don't change when you undergo a state change. All that changes is how close they are and how they're related to each other. This one shows hydrogen molecules and oxygen molecules. And this one shows hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms. So when you change the state of something, the individual particles remain the same. 